Here is an example that shows the effect of using negative exponents in arithmetic expressions. So for example, I want to work with the arithmetic expression 2 raised to the negative 3. So notice we have a negative exponent of negative 3. It turns out that you can write this in an equivalent form. It will have the same value and you can write it without the negative exponent, but the rule is that that must be done in the denominator. So you take the 2 to the minus 3 and you can write it as 2 to the positive 3 provided you move that down into the denominator. So I want to look at this problem 2 to the minus 3 and compare it to the more general property. Here's 2 to the minus 3. So there's a property of exponents that says if you have a number a in general, in this case it's 2, and it's raised to some number, I'm going to write minus n here, so in my example a is 2 and n is 3, that you can rewrite this expression without using a negative exponent. The rule is that you can write it as a to the n, and when you do that, you better put it in the denominator. And if you do so, then in the numerator, you'd have the number 1 here. So my property with this example, I'm using a being 2. And in this example, n would be 3. And by letting a be 2 and n be 3, you see that this part of my general property would become, let me replace a with 2. If I replaced n with positive 3, this would be, because of the minus sign here, would be a minus 3. I'm replacing n with 3. That gives me the question that was posed. And then my property says that that can be written as 1 over a to the n, where my a was 2 and my n was 3. So basically the property says, that if you have a problem where you have a negative exponent and you want to rewrite the problem with an equivalent value without the negative exponent, you can do it if you follow this property. Then in simplified form, because the question actually asked me to simplify, they just want you to realize that 2 to the third power means that you're taking that base, 2, and multiplying it by itself this number of times. In this case, it's a 3, so you're going to be doing that by itself 3 times. And if you did that, you'd get an 8 in the denominator, meaning that 2 to the negative 3 is equivalent to this, and that is the same value as the value of 1 8. So going back to my problem, you can see just that, that they wrote the 1 over 2 to the third in simplified form as 1 over 8. So moving on to the part that you have to do, you have 3 raised to the minus 3. Based on my property, 3 to the minus 3, if you go back, If you go back to the property, 3 to the minus 3, if you let me start over, would be a very similar problem, except instead of having this problem, it's 3 to the minus 3. So what you would have to do, your a is 3, is write it as 1 over a is 3. And for this general property to apply, your n value would have to be 3. So you'd be replacing n with 3 here. And again, basically doing exactly what I said before. If you want to write 3 to the minus 3 without a negative exponent, write it as 3 to the 3. So you're writing it without this negative exponent. But for it to be mathematically equivalent, you need to put it in the denominator. So going back to the math AS question. So going back to the math AS question, I have 3 to the minus 3. And I'm going to write that as 1 divided by. I'm going to press 3. And then to get an exponent, I'm going to use the keyboard on my computer and hold shift and press 6 to get a caret. Type in negative 3. To make sure it's what I want, I'm going to click preview. Notice that I get exactly what I wanted. Now I need to simplify that expression. So what I'm going to have to do is go back here and realize that my base is 3. And then I'm supposed to multiply it by itself 3 times. And then if you need a calculator, you could do that or just realize that 3 times 3 is 9 and 9 times 3 is 27. So what you're going to get is that this quantity is the same as this quantity, which is still the same as this quantity 1 over 27. So going back here, I'm going to write 1 over 27. And if you preview it, you can see that that's exactly what I want. You can do that with these questions until you get over here 
you get some examples where you have to evaluate expressions that don't have negative exponents. It turns out that for all numbers in the world, except for one exception, that the only way to define raising to the zero power to make it equivalent, or excuse me, consistent with other mathematical exponent properties, that a number to the zero power will always be one. If you want me to write that as a general property, we have to be careful. I'd like to say that any number to the zero power is one, and I would be correct most of the time. There is one exception, and in this video I won't show why the exception is the way it is, but in this video I will point out that a to the zero, where a can be almost any number, it doesn't matter what a is, any number to the zero power always gives one. You can do this on your calculator. Take your calculator, raise three to the zero power, and what you're going to get is you're going to get one. You could do this all day long and you would always get a answer of one. Any number to the zero power is one, with one exception, just so that you know, that if you use zero to the zero power, it turns out that there's no meaningful way to define that, so we say that it is undefined. So as long as you don't come across the example where a is zero, a, any number to the zero power will be one, so what you'll see is we'll say, you know, a, uh, the value of a can't be zero, so as a general property, any number to the zero power is one, as long as you don't try to replace a with zero, because zero to the zero is undefined. They don't do that in this problem, however. Uh, moving on, three to the first power means that you're taking three and you're raising it to the first power, so that's three. Three to the second power means three times three, or nine. 3 to the third power means multiply 3 by itself 3 times. So you're going to get the same thing we did over here, that 27, except it's not going to be in the denominator because I don't have a negative exponent. So this is going to be 27. If you fill these answers in, I don't want the video to be too long, you would get 1 divided by 3 squared. Oops, let me back up to this one. This one is 3 to the negative 2 power. That would be the same thing as 3 to the positive 2 power if you put it in the denominators. So that would be 1 divided by 3 raised to the second power. Preview that. And then if you want to simplify that, that would be 1 divided by, because, because 3 squared means 3 times 3, you'd have a 9 in the denominator. I'm going to preview that. And then finally this one. Again, you could think of the problem instead of being 3 to the negative 1 power, it would be 3 to the positive 1. But to do that, because you're getting rid of the negative exponent, you need to write that in the denominator. So it's going to be 1 divided by 3. And if you wanted to match this over here, you could think of it as you're raising to the 1 power. So you're writing as 3 to the 1, but you're getting rid of the negative sign. And when you preview it, it probably would, oh, it actually shows 3 to the 1. So that would be the equivalent of 1 third, because 3 to the first power is just 3. So the preview would show 1 third. So if you actually show all of these previewed answer that there's an intended pattern here that every time the exponent goes up by 1 from negative 3 to negative 2, from negative 2 to negative 1, every time we increase that exponent by 1, you may notice that our answers get multiplied by 3. Now, if you didn't notice it, that's fine, but it turns out that our answers to get from 1 to the next would be multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3, and there's a pattern that's going on there because after all, exponents are basically telling us how many copies of 3 uh, that you have. In this example, we had three copies of 3 being multiplied. Here we had two 3's being multiplied. Here we had one 3 being multiplied. It's difficult to explain what zero 3's multiplied together, but we have to define that to be 1, it turns out. So if you scroll down, you're just going to see more examples of the same, except this time they use a base of 10, but it's going to be accomplished in a similar fashion as the problems above it.